So what we're going to do is we're going to do just a, a brief overview of uh, what cloud storage is in case somebody doesn't really understand what it is. It's a pretty simple concept. Talk about what we've been using in the past, what we're using now. They're almost identical. There's only a few small differences. And then we'll kind of do a quick demo as to how they look. Okay, can everybody see the PowerPoint? Is anybody unable to see this PowerPoint? Thanks, Jan. I appreciate it. Okay, so what we're going to do is, again, we're going to talk about cloud storage a little bit, um, particularly the ones here at NDSU. There's two offerings, uh, OneDrive and Google File Stream. Um, as you might be aware, we used to use OneDrive for Business and Google Drive. And these are basically the same thing. The clients are a little different. It's the same concept. Nothing's really changed in the cloud. It's just what's changed on our desktop. So to begin, we'll just talk what you know. what's cloud storage. We always talk about the cloud. What's the cloud? Um, in extremely simple terms, the cloud is the internet. So when we talk about things in the cloud, it just means that it's not relevant to the physical location most of the time. The fact is it's connected to the internet. We have access to it from anywhere you have an internet connection. So when we talk about cloud storage, we're basically talking about storage that's connected to the internet, that's accessible from the internet, that holds our data. Um, in terms of what we use, we use OneDrive, we use uh, Google File Stream, others use Dropbox. Uh, each of those companies manages a number of data warehouses where they you know, house tons of servers, lots of hard drives, lots of data storage. And they have multiples of them around the country and sometimes around the world. These warehouses are designed to be redundant, so if one loses power or they have a natural disaster, your data is stored at multiple warehouses, so you can continue to access your data even though one of those is having a problem. It's a really good backup solution. So like I was saying, um, the, the differences between a lot of these is what we see on our side, on the client side, on your computer. And it's the software that makes the difference. Um, each one is unique in how they handle things, although they're all very similar. Um, but yes, the software is what syncs the files between your computer and the cloud servers. You can also use the web. Um, you can go into the web interface. Uh, it's definitely not as nice. Um, if any of you have ever tried it, you'll, you'll understand it's a lot slower working than just using the client, because with the client, it's just like working with files on your hard drive all the time. And again, like I was saying, there are many different providers, Dropbox, iCloud. Uh, there's another company called Box. We have OneDrive, Google Drive, now Google File Streaming. Um, there's a ton of different options. Uh, NDSU just happens to have contracts for both OneDrive and Google File Stream. So in the past, like I said, we'd use OneDrive for business, and then we'd use Google Drive. Now, there was a OneDrive and there was a OneDrive for business. OneDrive was for personal items. Um, that was free to everybody. OneDrive for business was something that was paid for per license by the business, and you got a lot more storage space. Both of these options in the past, uh, for the most part, if we wanted to share files, we had to go into the web interface in order to share the files, set up who had access to the files, that type of thing. And it really limited your ability to control your access um, without going there. I mean, sitting at your computer, it was very difficult sometimes to share some of those files just because you didn't have the options available without logging in on the website. The other issue we had was in the past with both of these options, all your files were located on your hard drive and were synced to the cloud. So the cloud had a copy, but you also had to have that same file located on your hard drive all the time. And like it says here, Small drives can be problematic for data storage simply because if you had a lot of files, a lot of picture files, a lot of those things, storing them in the cloud is great. You can get access wherever, but keep, uh, the fact you had to keep a physical copy on your hard drive meant that your hard drive would start to fill up pretty quickly. With the current cloud storage options, and again, we'll just review, uh, we have OneDrive, which is now a universal client. Instead of OneDrive Personal and OneDrive for Business, they're all pushed into just OneDrive. Um, and then again, Google Drive is turned into Google File Stream. 
when you look at them from your computer, for the most part, they're going to work exactly the same as they always have, with just a couple of additions. You're now going to have improved client-based control options. Um, what I mean by that is now you are going to have the ability to share files, um, specifically certain people, or generate links right from your desktop. You don't have to log into the web to do it. Um, the other nice thing, and the one that I particularly like, is that you now have the ability to select which files are kept on your machine and which are kept in the cloud. So you only pull down the files you're going to work on. If you're going to travel, you can just pull the files you need. So if you've bought a notebook and you've got a smaller hard drive, you don't have to have everything with you. You just pick the files that you need. So with that being said, I'm just going to take a quick look at each one of the new versions, the new OneDrive and the Google File Stream. We're just going to talk about a couple of, you know, a couple of the, the highlights of each one. Um, you'll notice they're pretty much identical to the old ones. And then we're going to throw up a copy of the different status icons just so you see what they're like and a quick little blurb about the menu items. And then once we're done with that, we'll jump into a little demo where we'll look at each one so you can kind of poke at it, we can kind of poke and prod at it and show you how it works. So we'll start with OneDrive. And again, one client supports both personal and business versions. There's no two versions of OneDrive anymore, which is really nice because it takes a lot of the confusion out of it for folks. It still has one terabyte of storage, which we've always had. Um, that's just kind of a standard for OneDrive. Something that's important to note, and anyone that's ever talked to me about this has heard this too many times, they probably roll their eyes, OneDrive is HIPAA and FERPA compliant. So depending on the type of data you're working with, if you're working with students, working with health information, it's important to know this because some, some offerings are not compliant with these and you could actually be outside the law if you put something in there that you shouldn't have because these data warehouses, some of them are stored outside the United States, some of them are stored in other places, uh, just their physical location in the world can actually cause problems and also the types of agreements these companies are willing to sign with us. Microsoft is willing to guarantee uh, file security to meet the requirements of both of these laws. And uh, one last thing I mention, it does say download here. However, if you have Windows 10, uh, Windows 10 through the updates has already updated OneDrive. So if you go into your Windows 10 uh, start menu, you may see both a OneDrive and a OneDrive for business. And the the OneDrive, singular OneDrive, is actually universal. You can use it for both, and that's the one we recommend you use. That's the one that's going to have the extra tools. Okay, so here's a little, uh, little cheat sheet I put together. So just to show what's going on here, when we go to look at the demo, um, these probably look familiar to you if you've used OneDrive in the past, but there's a number of different icons up at the top that you'll probably... Um, you'll probably be seeing most of them. Um, again, you know, like the first one, file can't be synced. Hopefully you never see that one. Um, but the sync in progress, you'll see that anytime you generate a new file or you've edited a file, because it'll be constantly sending it up to the cloud to keep that up to date. The next one, if you share folders or files with people, it'll show a little stick person next to the cloud icon to let you know that that is shared. Kind of nice to help you keep track of your organization, your, your files. Um, Below that, again, is just the cloud. That lets you know that that file is stored in the cloud and not locally. And then the last two are a little bit confusing because they actually mean the same thing. Both of those mean that it's stored locally on your machine. The difference is the solid green one at the bottom is when you have specifically selected it to be stored on your machine for offline use. And the hollow green one, so to speak, the second from the, bo the, second from the bottom, is uh, when you open a file to work on it, uh, OneDrive will automatically save it to your local your local hard drive, and so it'll do that for you. But in both cases, they are on your local hard drive. They are taking up space. Now, like we said, there are ways to manage this a little better now. And if we go down to the menu options, uh, you'll see a couple of different options there. Um, the first one that's a big one to me is share. I can now select a file or folder uh, in my OneDrive account, and I can share it without having to log into the website. You right click, you click on share, and uh, basically another screen will pop up. It'll prompt you for an email address of the person you wish to share with. There's also some other options. Uh, you can create a link that you can send out to people. Um, you can manage the types of permissions. 
Um, very handy stuff. Uh, the next one, View Online. All that really does, if you click on that, is it takes you to a web browser to try and log you into the web interface. And that's really all it is. Um, so unless you want to use a web interface, that's probably not an option you're going to use too often. Next one, always keep on this device, pretty self-explanatory. You're basically telling it, I don't want to store this in the cloud. I want to keep this on my computer. I use it when I'm not connected to the internet. Um, so that's a, that's a good option for the, the files that you plan on using. If you're going somewhere, you don't have internet access, or the files that you just, you're just working with all the time, uh, those are the types you want to mark with keep on this device. And those will be marked with the solid green round check mark. Um, free up space. Basically, that's what it does. Either of the two, the, either the solid or the hollow check mark, any files with that, you can highlight those, right click on them, and tell it to free up space, and it'll push it. Basically, just keep a copy in the cloud and get rid of it off your hard drive and clean up some space. So if you've got a ton of old photos that you're no longer using but you want to hang on to, you can get rid of them off your hard drive and leave them in the cloud just in case you ever need to reference them. Okay, Google File Stream. Google File Stream is going to be very similar to OneDrive and how it operates. Um, and again, just like OneDrive was, Google File Stream... Uh, all the basically all the highlights are going to be pretty much the same as what Google Drive was. Um, again, replaces the old Google Drive client. It still has unlimited storage space, same as before. Now, this is something to note. Again, Google Drive was the same way. It's HIPAA compliant only. It does not meet the requirements for FERPA. So, just something to keep in mind if you're going to use one or the other. Um, there may be some files that maybe you won't be able to put in there. And, and just as a reminder, um, or actually, maybe I, I actually didn't make this point earlier, both OneDrive and Google File Stream, neither of them, uh, you have to be careful what you put in if you have anything that's subject to export uh, restrictions. And for the most part, most of us aren't going to have anything like that. And if you do, you'll know it. So if you're wondering if you have it and you don't think you do, you probably don't. You don't have to worry about it. Um, but just to let you know that, there are certain things we just can't put onto these drives that, you know, it, it violates certain laws. And the last thing, uh, to get this one, you actually log into your Google account online. And when you go into the Google Drive online, in the upper right-hand corner, there should be an option to download Google File Stream. You download it, you run it, you put in your credentials, and it'll install, and then it'll, uh, the demo I'm about to show you, uh, it'll look just like that. So just the last thing, uh, just another little uh, little cheat sheet here for the, the Google Stream. You'll notice Google has a lot less icons than Microsoft does. Apparently they feel you just need to know if it's on the computer, in the cloud, and if it's syncing. Um, can't say I agree with that. Simple is good. But yeah, so you'll see those three icons. Now unlike, uh, unlike the new OneDrive, the new OneDrive does not overlay these icons onto your files and folders anymore. Instead it creates a column called status and puts those in. Google File Stream still has, each file icon will still have one of these on it. So that's a little bit different from OneDrive, but again, nothing major. And then underneath, you look at the menu options. Uh, there's uh, Open with Google Drive, which uh, just like what OneDrive will do, will actually try to open it up in a web browser for you. So again, you probably won't use that too much. The Share with Google Drive will actually open an interface where you can uh, define who you want to share the file or folder with. Uh, put in an email address, create a link, those types of things. And then the final options are basically available offline or online only, just like OneDrive again. You can specify which files you want to keep on your computer for travel or for because you work on it a lot uh, versus the stuff you just want to store online and get off your hard drive and clean up some space. So with that, we'll see if we can make a demo happen. Before I start, any questions? I talk kind of fast, so feel free to let me know if there's anything you need, you, uh, anything I missed or I want, wasn't clear on. I see Ken's typing here. Good question. So when you put personal and business OneDrive accounts in there, it will actually differentiate between the two, and it will create two separate folders for personal versus business. And the way you'll be able to tell is the business one, you'll see something to the effect of OneDrive, your name, and then it'll say something like North Dakota University System after it. The personal one won't have that. 
So good question, fantastic question, but it does keep them separate. It will have two separate folders. Any other questions for a start? Okay, well, I'll just cut away from this and then I'm going to share a screen here. Hold on with me one, so one second. Okay. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Is it showing up okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. Just want to make sure, as, as much as it looks like it's working on my end, I'm always afraid that people won't be able to see it. Okay, so what we're going to do is, um, since it's already installed here, we're going to assume it was installed. We either went to OneDrive in our Start menu, or we downloaded from the link in the, and I'll, I'll put the link up again. We'll actually, when I'm done, I'm going to create a little page and put it on our website as well with that same information. Um, but the link to where you can download OneDrive, and then again with the, the Google file stream, you just log into Google with your NDSU account, go into the Google Drive section, and then up the upper right-hand corner, there's a download file stream option. So we'll, we'll skip that part. Um, but what we'll do is we'll go into our file explorer here. Oh, Becky reminded me, we'll be making a Let's Communicate article on that. So, absolutely. Okay, so we are in File Explorer. And over on the left-hand side, just to show you a couple things, so here's my OneDrive account. And as you can see, oh, it doesn't have my name. I'm sorry, Ken, I misspoke there. It just puts North Dakota University System behind it. But that's how you'll tell your business account from the other. And then farther up is my Google Drive file stream. And uh, curiously, they actually add a drive letter to that now. So you can actually, you know, in some cases, some software you're using where it wants a drive letter, you now have a drive letter. So I'll start with OneDrive. So when you go in there, for example, oh, I guess I don't have anything. We'll create some, fol or some files real quick here. So if you look... Right here, there's a column that says status, and both of those are hollow check marks right now because since they're just created, uh, OneDrive is assuming that I'm going to store them on my computer, but it, I haven't specifically told it so, so it's not a solid green. So I could go and right-click on one of those, and here's our menu options. So I could say, always keep on this device, and now it'll change to that icon to indicate that that was something I chose to do. I could also right click on it and tell it free up space and it'll now send it to the cloud. And then in the, in the meantime when I'm making the changes you'll notice, hopefully you'll notice that it actually shows the sync icon while it's working. So if I try to click view online, what it actually does is it fires up a web browser and takes me to the Microsoft login page. So I could log in to, I'm not going to, but uh, could log into OneDrive online and be able to see this as well. So let's take a look real quick at the share option. So I'll right click again and I'll go to share. And what it does is right off the bat, you can set your, your permissions here. Anyone can, you know, work with this link, or you can select only people in the North Dakota University system, or people with existing access, however you want to do it. You just have to be kind of careful how you select your share permissions here, or specific people. Um, yeah, you can also set an expiration date so that you can only access it for a certain amount of time. But um, yeah, you can, uh, I could put in for example, I could add John Fry to this so he could see this file as well just by entering his email, clicking send. That'll send him a message. Well, I could have added a message. It just sends him a note that he got added. Um, but you could do this for as many people as you want. You can go up here. You can manage access. Um, this is just for the owners of it. And, yeah, so not a whole lot there. 
Um, you can copy the link if you want to put the link in an email and send it to a number of people. Uh, a number of different options you can do to share, uh, share your files and folders. Now, curiously, I shared it with John, but I don't see the little stick figure up here. So uh, I think Microsoft is lying to me a little bit. I apologize for that. But uh, we'll see if it pops up here in a little bit. Maybe it takes a little bit of time. In the meantime, we'll take a look at Google Drive. So I'll go up here to Google Drive, and again, I've already gone to the web, logged into my Google account, gone to Google Drive, went up to the right-hand corner, downloaded the software, and installed it. And it's going to be very similar, except one thing you'll notice right off the bat is when you first go in there, you're going to have two options. You're going to have Team Drives and My Drive. And I'll briefly cover Team Drives here in a little bit. What we're focused on right now is My Drive, because that's where the traditional Google Drive uh, contents are. You go inside there, and it's very similar to OneDrive. So here's my three folders. And again, there's the icons. And Google, unlike Microsoft, instead of putting them in a column, they overlay them over the picture of the folder or the picture of the file. So all of these are in the cloud. And I can go into here, and I have a number of different files here. One I've already saved to my local drive. And just like Microsoft, it has a solid green uh, circle. Uh, very easy to tell that it's stored locally. Uh, the others are in the cloud. I can right click on any one of them. I can go here to drive file stream and I can change it to available offline. It'll sync and it'll now create another green checkbox or check circle rather. I can right click on there and uh, whoops, I guess we have to do it this one. Right click and go to online only and it'll revert back to cloud storage. And if we wanted to share, again, we could use Open with Google Drive. It'd do the same thing as OneDrive. It'd open up a web browser and take us to the Google Drive login, or to our Google login, rather. Um, so I won't do that. But uh, share with the Google Drive, if we click there, we are going to get something that looks very similar to the OneDrive, um, a box where you can put in uh, names of addresses of people that you want to add to the ability to share. Up in the right-hand corner, you can get a link. So you can send that out in an email so people can get access to it. Um, yeah, and then you can, uh, well, actually, let's uh, let's add somebody here. Let's add John again. So now we've got John in there. And the reason I want to do that is I just wanted to show you, you can change the status of each person. You can give them edit, comment, or just view permissions if you want, or you can make them an owner. So this is how you would control access to it. Uh, again, set expirations. You can set a date when they can no longer access that file. And then, you know, some extra options down here, prevent editors from changing access, disable options to download. A lot of different things to play with, but the basics are very similar. You just throw in some names, it'll send them an email letting them know that they're uh, they're attached to or they it's being shared with them so they can access it. And here, you know, right up here they even give you the link to the share if you're in the uh, the advanced options. So very similar stuff if you use uh, SharePoint or OneDrive at all in the past and you've shared stuff, it's gonna look kinda like that. So this shouldn't be all new to you. But um but yeah. So those are just some of the options we have. Um, to me the the file or the, the storage savings is, is incredible if you can move everything to the cloud and just keep what you're working on locally. Um, as many of us know, as the new hard drives come out with SSDs, they're smaller than we used to have. Some of us are already filling them up. This is a way to prevent you from filling it up, uh, give you a chance to kind of uh, put it off to the side, so to speak, and, and be able to go through it at your pace and clean things up. Um, or if you just work with a lot of data intensive uh, items where you just have really large files and a large number of them, it's a way to keep them handy without having to have a, an extra external hard drive or something like that. Um, but yeah, so really quick overview. I apologize if I talked real fast. I tried not to, but I tend to do that. Um, Anybody have any questions, or is there anything that you would like me to go over again, or maybe try, just so we can kind of see what it does? Uh, 
Uh, with your question, Jan, do you mean with the the web on the website in the the web interface? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, you can. All of this all of this can be done from the web interface as well. Um, you know, I have, I actually haven't tried to put anything on my drive from there. Um, so that may or may not be a little trickier. I think you'd have to download it from there to your drive. But it's uh, for the most part, all the controls are there. As a matter of fact, the stuff that's in the client, they pretty much, it was all in the web to begin with. They're just finally giving it to you through Explorer now so you don't have to log in all the time to do those types of things. Um, that is a great question about the Mac. I, I believe it should, but I don't know for sure. But I would be happy to find out for you and let you know one way or the other. Feel free to go ahead and talk if you guys want to. We don't have too many on here, so if you want to ask questions rather than type. Yeah, thank you, Becky. That Yeah, that would actually speed things up and make sure that we get everything uh, clarified. Uh, syncing really depends on how many items and how large of items, um, and, of course, your Internet speeds. Here on campus, if you've... Uh, if you just installed it and started it and you've got, you know, gigs and gigs of stuff, it could take a little while. It could take anywhere from a half hour to a couple of hours, depending on the size. If you've just got a couple of files, it probably ain't going to take more than a few minutes tops. So it, it's really dependent on the number of files and the size of files. Oh, that reminds me of one other thing. Um, Becky probably remembers this. In the past, uh, one of the old OneDrive clients actually limited us to 2,000, or no, it was 20,000 files, I believe it was. Yeah. So the new OneDrive uh, client, there is no limit. There is no file limit. I think I was the first guinea pig you guys worked with. And yes, I maxed it out, which I couldn't believe I had 20,000 files, but every photo counted as a separate file and every Word document and every PowerPoint and every file, obviously. And it took days to sync that first time. But now I absolutely love it. I don't have to worry about backup. I don't have that many files that my hard drive is full, so I just leave everything backing up and synced. But I do like this new option so I can clean some stuff up and not have everything both places. But as far as backup, I don't have to even think about it anymore. It's fantastic. However, I will admit, a week or two ago, right, Jerry, my syncing quit working for some reason. But we got it up and going quickly. So, it, and I was able to figure it out really easily, and I knew something was wrong. I wasn't smart enough to fix it myself, but at least I knew, hey, it's not syncing like it's supposed to be. So we got it syncing again, and I'm off rolling again. Uh, looks like we have another question. Uh, can I concurrently work on a file with someone else, for example, a Word file? You know, I we've never run into that. I think it's a fantastic question. Um, unfortunately, again, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look that up to find out to give you an an actual true answer rather than a guess. But I will find out and uh, I will let you know. I, I've got a, I'm making a list of all the questions here that I need to look up. So I'll add Elizabeth that to the list. Says yes. She's up, Elizabeth she's had and I share stuff all the time, and she says, yes, two people can have it open and be working on it at the same time. Fantastic. And she's a master, uh, I forget, uh, Microsoft Office specialist. Oh, okay. Yep, Jan was saying the same thing with Google Drive. Uh, Yep, you can work concurrently. I have seen that work on Google Drive. Uh, it wasn't a Word document. We were just using text documents at the time. But, uh, yeah, with OneDrive, I'd never tried it. So, Jerry, if anybody has trouble with any of this, usually we say call the help desk. But for this instance, they should probably call you directly. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um most of the trouble we're going to run into is either a login thing or probably more likely if you already have OneDrive for Business installed, you're going to see the little cloud icon and you're going to wonder how you how you get it fixed. Yeah, it's it's just a con um, since the OneDrive and OneDrive for Business, they each have the same cloud icon with a slightly different color too. I don't ask me why. 
it's just a matter of getting which, figured out which one we need to use, and uh, that's easy to do. I can certainly walk anyone through it. Shouldn't be a problem. Is there... Um, oh, I see Bob's typing a message. Okay. Thank you, Bob. That, that also helps clear things up. So apparently Microsoft Documents, you cannot collaborate on file stream. Is there any other questions um, that any of us... Obviously, I'm not the only person here that's used this, and some have actually used it more than I have, so now is the perfect time to ask if you have any other questions at all. Okay. Well, in that case, I think we're going to wrap up. I thank you all for coming. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, like Becky said, any questions, feel free to give me a call. And uh, I'd be happy to visit with each and every one of you. And, uh, I hope you all have a great day.